Week 25, Viva. What led to the fall of the Western Roman Empire? We often discuss the fall of the Roman Empire when we compare America to Rome. However, the fall of the Western Roman Empire is interesting and complex in and of itself. In reality, a series of changes to the Roman society made it increasingly incapable of fending off threats. First, we'll talk about Christianity. Secondly, internal issues in the Roman Empire. And thirdly, external threats. My first point is through Christianity becoming the official Roman religion. This changed the way Romans viewed themselves, leading to the Western Roman Empire's fall. Christian ideology changed the way that, view, that Romans viewed themselves. They saw themselves as no longer special or powerful just because they were Romans. Historically, Christians were affiliated with the rejection of all pleasure and breaking home and family ties. As Paul Hertog states, quote, Pagans resented the disruptive force of, Christian of Christianity upon the Roman commonwealth, unquote. Traditionally, Roman moral culture and virtue, and virtue was about the collective good of the empire. Also, it focused on hierarch hierarchical structures, such as the patronage system, sacrifice for the state, and manliness. They actually defined virtue as um, being like a man. But in Christian societies, the focus is on the individual and the eternal nature of the soul. Therefore, the, na the nation of Rome could hold little significance for Christians. We can see this difference in the morality based on the different societies' views on suicide. Traditionally, Romans saw suicide as a virtuous alternative to dishonor. Suicide was even redemptive in a sense, and it was often committed after a defeat or a betrayal of the Roman state. The Senator Cato the Younger was honored after his suicide, when his military cause was defeated. However, motivation was important. Romans disapproved of Mark Anthony's suicide, not because he killed himself, but because he killed himself for love. The Christian views were very different from the Roman ones. People who attempted suicide were banned from church services. People who killed themselves were buried outside consecrated graveyards, and even later on, their bodies were publicly defamed. Christians see souls as eternal. Thus, society, Christian societies are individualist, whereas Romans basically worship, worship the states, the state. With Christianity becoming mainstream in the Roman Empire, the church rejected the idea that the empire should be the central focus of one's life. As can be expected, interest and enthusiasm in the military began to decline. We'll talk more about that soon. My second point is that internal issues such as Rome's repeated devaluation of its currency led to the collapse. Edward Gibbon said, quote, Instead of inquiring why the Roman Empire was destroyed, we should rather be surprised that it had subsisted so long, unquote. The Western Roman Empire slowly collapsed under the weight of the government's of the government's failing management. One reason for Rome's decline was imperial overreach. The empire had extended itself beyond its ability to maintain its military or economy. Rome needed a huge military to control all of its territory. However, it did not have enough money to do so and to pay its soldiers. However, the efforts to create more money out of thin air led to Rome's downfall. The denarius was the standard coin in ancient Rome. 
it was worth around a day's labor for a skilled worker. Originally, the corns were pure silver, but this limited the amount of money that was available or could be made. This also limited the government's spending, so officials decided to decrease the purity of the coin. In Marcus Aurelius' time, which was around the end of the Pax Romana, the denarius was about 75% silver, but by the final years of the empire, the coins were, were barely 5%. Although the consequences took a while to materialize, they were lasting. Apparently, adding more or less valuable coins um, did not increase prosperity. It only transformed wealth away from the people that already had money and created runaway inflation. With prices rising, workers demanded higher wages. After a while, there were no more available precious metals to mine or to plunder from, from a surrounding um, nations. Romans levied taxes on the people to sustain, to sustain the empire, paralyzing the economy and reducing trade. Most people abandoned the state coins and tried to barter for goods. Many barbarians on the fringes of the empire actually lived better than the Romans. And the Romans themselves had to begin to lose their loyalty for the empire which could no longer protect or provide for its citizens. My third point is that external threats to Rome and new immigrant communities began to grow in power, eventually leading to the overthrow of the state. Rome's collapse came after a string of military losses and invasions of, barbari of barbarian tribes in the 14th and 15th centuries. In four, not 14, 15, fourth and fifth centuries, excuse me. In 476, the German leader Odoacer, oh dear, that's phonetically, <laughs> staged a revolt that deposed the Emperor Roman Romulus Augustus, the last Roman Empire to rule from Italy. That is why most people cite 476 as the end of the Western Roman Empire. In the years preceding the final collapse, the Roman state survived, but the freedoms and liberty of most of its citizens did not. This is why Joseph R. Peden says, quote, When freedom became possible in the West in the 5th century with the barbarian invasions, people took advantage of the possibility of change, unquote. So as addressed earlier, some people weren't so sad about being invaded by barbarians. The barbarian attacks on Rome stunned, st not stunned, stemmed from mass, from mass migration caused by the invasion of the Huns in Europe, causing many Germanic tribes to relocate, pushing them towards the borders of the Roman Empire. The Romans actually allowed vast numbers of these refugees into Rome. However, Rome's population came to distress them, and violence increased. These refugees proved to be an enemy to the Romans. They killed the emperor, Valens, in 378, and in 310, the city of Rome was destroyed by the Visigoth king, Alaric. Taking advantage of the chaos, other groups surged across the borders and occupied Rome. Thus ended the Western Roman Empire. In conclusion, although we often compare America to the Roman Empire and its collapse, the Western Roman Empire's fall was unique and caused by a series of changes to Roman society, which made it increasingly incapable of defending itself. These changes first were Christianity, secondly, a host of internal issues, and thirdly, external threats to the empire. Thank you.